Welcome back. Okay, so make sure you pass that handle click um, function uh, set handle timers um, into both of the timers, okay? And uh, so we come up here and we make sure we pass it in as a prop. And then on these buttons, we can now add on click handlers. So we can add one to the decrement button. And we can also add one to the increment button. So what we're going to do in this case, we don't just want to we don't just want to do handle click. We want to make it a callback. So we just put in a function that calls handle click. And if you recall. Handle click. When we call our function, we set it up on the basis of taking in these parameters. It saves us a bunch of lines of code, and it's just cool to make a function like this. Um, and that's the beauty of React. You can really work with JavaScript. So the first uh, argument is going to be, is it an increment, true or false? And the second is the type which corresponds to either break value or session value. So for our decrement, we're going to pass in the first argument of false. For our increment, we'll pass in true. And then for our second argument, we want to pass in a template string. And that's going to be, if remember, we passed in the type earlier. So the type would be session for session and break for break. So we pass in that second value like that. So let's just walk one of these through. Let's walk increment for, pretend this is the session value here. So we'd be passing in true session value. So you go on here, okay. So this dot set state session value equals this dot state dot session value plus we want to increment true so one. Kind of error here. Huh. Oh, whoops, I passed them into the wrong. It's hard to talk and code. Pass them into the actual function, not the callback part. Pass them into the handle click part. <laughs> Save that again. And now something's amiss. are supposed to be lowercase. The types are actually lowercase. Um, so the types, th these are all supposed to be lowercase. Um, so in this case, the one thing it did break was, okay, now, now this works but we wanted that to be a capital. So we're going to change this around a little bit here. So we can say Uh, 
I'll just start this over. I say type equals session. Session else break and then outside of that length and stick an extra space after each one of them like that. And with that, now we get what we want. Like so. And I think we could safely change that to an H1 tag. Oh, not that one. Yeah, that one. No, not that one. <laughs> That's not what we wanted to make. Yeah, we'll make this down here an H1 tag. We've got a div. Now, okay, that's better. Now we can see the number a little bit better. Okay. But there was a rule where... You should not be able to set breaks uh, equal or less than zero or greater than 60. So we need to add some logic in to handle that. So we can just say... I'll say if if that state or we can do this again, this that state type is greater I would just say if it equals sixty. For return, and I will say this does it equal sixty, and increment will return. So now we can't increment. And we'll say if if that state type. equals one and not increment return. Now we should not be able to go below one and, and either one really. And we should not be able to go above sixty. Cool. And then at any time you want to load in the tests, copy and paste the JavaScript from there and just add it as a resource, save it, Pomodoro clock, run your tests, let's see what's going on. It's still running above its orange. So you just let it run the test and then you see what you need to do afterwards. But uh, now that we've got that covered, we've got our we've got our buttons working. Now we need to get into the timer part. And that's really the most complicated part of the whole um, project, and that's what we'll get into next video.